Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the erect crested penguin, one of three similar looking crested penguins endemic to southern New Zealand that have one of the most bizarre breeding systems of any bird. I hope you enjoy. Erect crested penguins are medium to large crested penguins, coming in at lengths of 65 centimetres and weights of 4 kilograms, and have prominent black backs, faces and throats, and being sharply separated from their white underparts. Their most notable feature, however, are their yellow eyebrow stripes, which start between the nostril and gape, rising obliquely over their red-brown eyes, being roughly parallel from front on. They are most similar to the related snares crested penguins, which have a more swollen looking orange bill when fully grown, as well as pinker skin around the base of the bill. They also have their crests starting nearer the nostrils and passing back roughly in line with the bill. From the front, their crests also make a V shape compared to the more parallel crests of the erect crested penguins. Snares crested penguins also have a relatively small chin and a flatter crown. Erect crested penguins also have a booming bray sound which is lower pitched than others of their kind and can be heard at the end of this video. Birds feed on small fish, krill and squids, only coming onto land to breeze and molt, and hence are poorly known behaviourally and biologically due to their remote habitats and restrictive permitting required to study them. Almost all birds breed in and around the Antipodes and Bounty Islands, with them nesting on the rocky coastal margins. They form large flocks, being colonial breeders, and have one of the most bizarre breeding systems of any bird species. This is due to the extreme egg size dimorphism with the second of their clutch, averaging around 81% larger than their first. The purpose, if any of the first egg, which is considerably smaller, remains unclear, with nearly all pairs losing the smaller egg around the time the second is laid. Much of this does seem deliberate, as incubating birds have been observed, lifting this first egg out of their nest bowl, and so it may be some type of warm-up to laying the bigger egg so as to prepare the female, although this is still a point of debate. Both adults share the incubation and care of the young once hatched around mid-November, being guarded for around three weeks and then forming crushes for about six weeks, before departing their colony in late January through early February. Birds face little threat from introduced predators, with the Bounty Islands being pest-free, and the Antipodes, while having mice, don't seem to be a threat to their young, and there are no recognised interactions with fisheries due to their remoteness. However, historic photographs show that some Antipodes colonies are now much smaller. This probably reflects changes in local oceanographic productivity, requiring adults to swim further to find food for their chicks, and thereby reducing breeding success, likely due to anthropogenic climate change, with population observed to have declined during the last few decades, with their population being around 150,000 mature individuals. They are therefore listed as endangered due to their declining population and lack of consistent breeding habitats, and although said decline has slowed in recent years, they have still yet to be closely monitored to observe if things are getting better or worse for them. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Antarctic Prion, abundant seabirds of Antarctic and subantarctic waters. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.